Good morning. Okay, the weekend. Hope you are ready for a very intense three day week. Um, so, uh, go schedule your own final. The thing that I'm going to say every day from now till the end of the course, probably. So, today is, um, my opinion, the most exciting class in the whole course because we're going to see the fundamental theorem of calculus and we're going to learn how you do integrals without doing Riemann sums. Um, so let's get to it. So this is uh, 5.3. So what the fundamental theorem of calculus says is that um, the integral and the derivative undo each other. Oh, I'm writing in the wrong time word. Okay. What am I doing? So, um, so okay. So you have a function. Um, Continuous and a on a b and differentiable. Well, I don't know. I don't need to be differentiable. So then I'm I'm gonna say that the integral and the derivative are up are opposites. But um, well, the derivative of a function is a function, and the integral of a function. As far as I know, it's a number. Um, it's, the, it's the area under the graph of the function. So I guess the thing is, how do you turn this into? How do you turn this into a function? The way you can turn it into a function is by writing an integral, but letting the well, uh, letting the endpoint vary. So then you have a function that tells you um, that tells you what what area there is up to a particular point. Um, so let me draw a picture. Um, so this could be any letter, but I'm just gonna. I don't like calling it x because it's already an x in there. This is a function of x. Uh, for every x, I, I get a value. So, um, if this is a and b, and this is the graph of f, then whenever I have an x here, u of x is the area of this 
uh, of the space between A and X and then under the graph. Uh, let me draw a better picture. So you have a function. Let's say x squared. <clears throat> And then I'm saying, look at the look at the area under the graph. So as the as the number in here changes, um, I'm looking at a different area. So as I move the slider, I get, well, the, the blue area changes. I get a different value for the area. And the value I get is the value of the integral. So that's, I mean, that's what a, that makes a function. For every number, I get another number. Look here, I get exactly nine. Um, and by the way, doesn't matter at all what letter you put in there. These are just exactly the same. It's just a, well, I call them a dummy variable because they don't, it doesn't matter what they are, they don't mean anything by themselves. Um, so I could now graph this function. So, so what is this representing? So it's representing um, for every um, for every x value. What it's the the height of this graph is the is the value of the area here. So you can see as as the as I move the this point to the right, what happens is that the area increases. So accordingly, this function goes up. Okay, are there any questions? So let's try to figure out one of these functions without um, before we do anything else. So, so I'm going to give a formula for for this um, this function. So this function. So if I take the um, if I take the function y equals x, uh, this is giving me the area under this graph. So this is the area under the graph y equals x between 0 and x in the x-axis. I guess the problem is that we use the letter x too much, Oof. which is why I'm using a t instead of the integral. So um, if you have a particular point x here, so say, like, say you have here the points x equals 5. I know how to do this integral. 
without doing uh, Riemann sums. If uh, if x equals five, well, the area under this graph is a triangle. The, the graph is a line, and well, it has base five. And what is the what is the height of this triangle? What is this point up here? What is the y coordinate of that point? Five. Thank you, Matthew. Um, this is five comma the function of five. Um, so the height of this triangle is also five. It's a fast least. Um, so this area is the base times the height divided by two, which is Five times five divided by two. So I guess it's twelve point five. So this is what this function of five is. Uh, but of course, I can make it. Um, I can do the same thing um, for any x and give a formula. Well, basically. This um, now I have x equals five x x here. It's not five anymore. So the length underneath the the length of the base is also x, and this point, the coordinates uh, are x f of x, and and the function. The function is the identity f of x equals itself. So this is the point of x and y coordinate equal to x. And that makes the height of the triangle the exact same. So, um, so well, this is the area. This is the area of a triangle of uh, a right triangle of legs x and x <clears throat> and again if I do base times height divided by two that's x times x divided by two which is x squared over two so the the integral of this function where the 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 endpoint is x is going to be x squared over 2. <clears throat> Are there any questions? Where does TDT come from? Well, um, so this is just a function, an example. So normally you would have a function here and you could have, so you could have a function uh, written with an X, but the thing is, I don't like, I don't like having an X here and here. It's just, they're doing two different things and I don't like having the same letter doing two different things. So what I do is just, Instead of the integral, I could have any letter. You saying that, that f of x is two x is the same thing as having that saying that f of t is two t. So instead of writing, oh, sorry, instead of writing x dx, which I could, um. I write TDT because I don't want to use the, the letter X twice. 
<clears throat> but you know this is exactly the same it doesn't matter what letter you use you can use a u you can use an x even though it's not great you can use a y what you call the variable doesn't matter You can use an apple. These all mean the same thing. For any any letter you give it, the answer for what is the function at five is always five. And that's all that matters. Does that make sense, Matthew? And anyone else? All right. So, now that we know how to make a function out of the integral, I can tell you half of the fundamental theorem of calculus. It says that if um, f is a continuous function on a closed interval, um, we make this function by writing the integral, um, the integral when, when we let the endpoint vary, like we just did. So this makes sense um, in this interval. Um, because uh, as far as I know, f is not defined outside of the interval a, b. So you can't compute the integral outside of it. Um, then what happens is that the derivative of g is f. So in words, you do an integral and then a derivative and you get back the same function. So that means, um, so for example, um, in the previous page, um, we've seen that the integral from zero to x of the function f of x equals to x, which is the same as f of t equals to t, is x squared over two. Um, if we take the derivative, of what we got for the integral, well, you know how to do this. Um, you get x. Which is the original function. So, um, If you, for example, take the, the integral of x squared, 
um, you will get a function whose derivative is x squared. And basically, basically, you know the answer to um, to what that is. So, okay, let's try to to graph it. Um, let's do x like I was doing. So, if you do x, um, this area. So, the area I was just computing, the area of the triangle, is well. This is the function. The blue function is x squared over two. So this is um, the integral from zero to x of t v t, and this is y equals x. So um, here the y coordinate is the area of uh, blue triangle. You can see that it's always um, it keeps increasing. Well, it's it's a parabola. It's like squared over two. Um, so the thing is, um, the thing is now, the, the theorem is telling me what happens when I look at the, at the derivative of the integral, the derivative of the blue function. So that's uh, the slope of the tangent line. So I guess I should do the tangent line, the tangent line through a point is, is y minus uh, the value equals the derivative times x minus the x coordinate. Um, okay, this is the bad part to me. Um, Oh no, maybe I'll keep it there. Okay, so so the slope so the blue fun, the blue graph is the integral, and the slope of the of the blue graph is the derivative of the integral. And here you can clearly see it looks like it's one because it's parallel to the function y equals x. You can see well it, this way for you looks like a forty five degree angle. Uh, the thing is, this slope is equal to this value, um, the value of the function. So I'm saying the slope of the integral here is the value of the original function. If I move the, the, the points, for example, I take uh, the point x equals 2, then the function, the value of the function is two, and then this tangent line has slope two. If I move c to c equals three, then the function has value three, and the slope has value um, has value three again. This graph, um, when I go to the right one square, I go up three squares. And so on. If I make it say zero point five, so here the function has value zero point five, and and the slope of the of the tangent line to the integral is uh, one half. It's hard to well, it's hard to tell exactly, but. Um, this as I go two squares to the right, this is exactly one square going up. This is the same for all functions. That's a great question. So let's take a very complicated function. <clears throat> so 
maybe not make it negative. So here's a random login function. Uh, so here, for example, um, sure. Um, so here, so the red one is a function. Here, the the slope of the function is 0 0.68. Uh, the, sorry, the value of the function is 0 0.68. The slope of the of the integral is going to be um, is going to be 0 0.68. So that means that if I go to the right, if I go to the right one square, this is going to be um, 0.68. Which probably it is. Um, I mean, it has to be. But it sort of, sort of looks like two thirds of the of the y coordinate. And this, well, I don't know what this function is. It just it looks like a random thing. Um, if you move it, so if you, for example, if you go here, so here's an interesting point. Here somewhere around here the function is pretty much uh, zero and if i look exactly here that there the the integral is going to be horizontal the tenuous the derivative of the integral is going to be zero which would make the graph look horizontal at 1.0667 then you can see if you keep going, you can see the function becomes negative. And then the, this function starts to decrease, which makes sense because now at some point you're starting to subtract area, which is not, you can't see in my picture, but you're starting to subtract area. So this, this function is gonna start decreasing. So this, uh, this is a bit hard to visualize, but, um, Really, only thing to keep in mind is that you do an integral and then a derivative. You get um, you get the original function. So um, let me sketch why this is true. Um, because I think it's worth it. So um, I'm saying if you have a uh, function given by an integral like this, g prime of x is f of x. Well, um, the derivative, um, I'm going to just write down what the derivative is. The derivative is the limit as h approaches zero of g of x plus h minus g of x divided by h. <clears throat> so, um, well, the function g you 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 find that's the function you find by plugging it plugging x as the bounds for the for the integral. So what I gotta do to find g of x plus h is plug in x plus h as the bound for the integral. So this is the, this fraction here is the derivative, oh, the limit of it is the derivative of the integral. Um, so what I'm saying is take y equals f of x, take some x here, and here's x plus h gonna be 
and now um, the blue bit um, is the integral between a and x of f. And if I do, so what is the integral from a to x plus h? Well, it's the whole area that I'm that I'm coloring in. It's the red bit plus the blue bit. So, um, what do I get when I take the difference? Um, if I take the difference of the red and blue area minus just the red area, I get just a blue area. The blue area is the integral from a to x plus h minus the integral from a to x. So, um, but also um, I can see that this is the, the area between x and x plus h. So what I'm doing is just remembering that when you, when you take, take an integral from a to b and an integral from b, b to c and you add them together, that's the same as integrating from a to c. So this is the integral from x to x plus h. So this is something we saw on Friday, that if you add together the, integral, the intervals, the areas add together, as you would expect here, the blue and the red area add together when you join them. So, um, so let me just, so now we've figured out that the derivative of, of the integral is the limit, it's the limit of one over h times the integral from x to x plus h. Any questions? So um, to say that in different, the same thing in different words, the derivative is the, the limit of the increment in the function divided by the increment in x. And uh, no, I'm gonna write a, an optional worksheet. So we will have, let me, let me finish what I was saying and I'll answer. Um, there's, so the derivative is the limit of the increment in the function divided by the increment in in x. So the what he's saying is you increment x and what does the area increment by? It increments by this chunk in here. Um, and that chunk is exactly the, air, the area between x and x plus h. And well, the increment in x is just h. So Pascal is asking, will we have another written homework that will cover this topic? Uh, so no, the homework you handed yesterday was your last homework because the next one would collide with the exam. So this will be in the exam. Uh, and I'm going to do some problems, some problems for you to practice that you don't have to turn in. Um, so you will have, and, and there will be one more time. Uh, So I think, I think that answers the question. Okay, so I just, um, so I figured out that the derivative of G 
is the is the quotient between this area and H. So I'm looking at a little piece of y equals f of x, and I'm looking at this area between two points that are really close. Um, well, the thing, so now I'm not going to be very careful um, about my reasoning here, but the thing is, um, this is almost shaped like a rectangle. And the smaller I make h, the less f is allowed to vary, basically because it's continuous. The more, the closer to a rectangle it is. Um, so um, the area is basically the base times the height. So what I'm saying is that this is almost the same, the same area as just a rectangle. <clears throat> so, um, well, I know how I know the area of a rectangle. The base is H, and the height. Well, the height here is um, is f of x. So, um, as, as h approaches zero, this mysterious integral becomes just h times the function. And now these two just cancel. And I'm left with just the original function, as I promised. So that's it. That's essentially why the fundamental theorem of calculus is true. At least the the at least half of it. The other half is easier. Any questions? You're awfully quiet today. Um, but if you don't have questions, nothing I can do, but move to part two. So, um, by the way, it is a mouthful. So I'm, I'm going to call it FTC, Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. Um, part two out of two. Uh, this is also uh, called Barrow's Law. I think that doesn't say Barrow's Law, so I don't care. Um, so before, so part one said the derivative of the integral is the original function. I'm gonna be rough Monday. It's only a three day week. Oh, and then maybe you get kicked out of the zone and you have to move, in which case it might be very rough Monday. Uh, hopefully the fundamental theorem of calculus can brighten your week. It's brightening mine already. So we just said part one said the derivative of the integral is the original function. And part two is basically going to say the integral of the derivative is the original function. Um, or which is to say the same thing, um, to say the same thing that you find the integral by finding an antiderivative. Um, so 
the theorem says suppose f is continuous um, is continuous on, on the closed interval and and the function that I'm gonna call capital F is an antiderivative. In other words, um, F is continuous as well. Continuous um, on, on AB. And well, differentiable. Well, yeah, I should say differential. Differentiable on wherever it makes sense, which is the open interval. And the derivative of capital F is little f. All x in the open interval. So um, then if I take the integral of little f, what I get is big F. Um, one. <clears throat> so this is how you compute integrals. Um, 90% of the time, you find an antiderivative. Um, so, so here's an example. So last week it took me a good hour and a half to find the area under um, under the parabola, y plus x squared. I got one third after a lot of work, suffering, and tears, and despair. Um, but since um, I can find very easily a function that has derivative x squared, what are we doing? The derivative of x cubed divided by three is x squared. I can guess that in my head. Um, what I need to do is evaluate the function at one, evaluate it at zero, and subtract. And that gives me one third minus zero thirds. Um, and I did that same thing in, in 10 seconds. I have no idea if you're appreciating this as much as I am, but um, this is kind of incredible that I can find an area like this without just throwing a tiny bit of algebra at it. Last week, I had to use a formula for the sum of the natural, the squares of the natural numbers. X cubed over three, it came from asking the question, what function has derivative x squared? Um, so I was trying to find a, a function whose derivative is x squared. So probably has to do with x cubed divided by, with x cubed. If you guess x cubed, you see that you have an extra three. Any questions? Uh, so I think I'll do the proof tomorrow. The proof is easier than for part one. Uh, but basically, there's a lot of areas that you can. So, like, do we ever use Riemann sums in this? 
very likely that you will never use Riemann sum in your life. I mean, in the website homework for part one, you'll have to do a couple for the first two sections. Um, so, okay, here's a, a question you might have. Why did you tell me what Riemann sums are if you were just gonna tell me, um, if you were just gonna tell me this, to which I say, I couldn't tell you that the derivative is the opposite of the integral without telling you what the integral is. Um, and the integral, what the integral is, it's the, the freaking Riemann sums. Um, so this is an amazing theorem that these two things are opposites to each other. Um, but of course you can't understand it if you don't know what the two things are. All right, so, um, so another area that I took a guess for, I did it one Riemann sum for the, the area under, under the graph of sine, and it got like 2.02. So sine of x starts at zero and hits zero again at x equals pi. So there's there's an area in here um, which is the integral. It's the integral from zero to pi of sine x. So um, so to find this area, so the fundamental theorem of calculus part two says that if I find a function whose derivative is sine, then the integral from zero to pi, this integral is the function at pi minus the function at zero. Uh, so, so, so far the only tool we have for finding a function, finding an antiderivative is guessing. So what should we guess? Wait, so like, are we assuming that like sine of X is the antiderivative? No, sine of X is the derivative of something. So, so here I have a function, I take the derivative and I get sine. So what function has derivative sine? Negative cosine. So you should guess cosine. I cosine, oh, negative. You should guess probably cosine and then you would see that, or just guess negative cosine. Um, the derivative of cosine has a, is negative sine. So once you put a minus there, uh, you're done. So like I just said, the area, the integral is, just be careful with the signs, negative cosine of pi minus negative cosine of zero. And now look on the table or something, ne uh, negative cosine is, uh, cosine of pi is negative one, cosine of zero is one. So that is, oh, oh careful with the signs. Um, so there's, um, they're both, they're both in the positive. So the area you get is two. So interestingly, um, this area of a shape that has base pi, which is an irrational number, ends up being just two.
It's in very colorful the minus signs. Since there's four of them. Um the area on their side is just two. It's not a crazy irrational number. It's not like by to the seventh divided by thirty-five. It's two. That's your other shaded region. Yep. All right. Um, well, that's it. That was uh, the most exciting class of the whole semester. Uh, it's only downhill from here. I think there's only a week. Uh, it's not recording in my office.